Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today it's about air guns again, about Germany legal super weak air guns, limited at five and a half foot pounds, seven and a half joule. Um, and in Germany that kind of limit was set because scientific studies showed that at that weak power um, the pellet will actually penetrate skin but it won't go in very deep so it will most likely not kill a person that is shot with it uh, and it will also not seriously injure a person if you say it's not a hit in the eye so but just in center mass. Um, but that is only true for lead pellets uh, and the law doesn't say what kind of thing you can shoot from a five and a half foot pound unregulated air gun in Germany. So the deadliest projectile at weak power that I have is this blowgun dart. Actually, there is this video in the internet where someone takes a blowgun and kills a bear with it and I confirmed it. I also did the test with ballistic gelatin and so on and I confirmed that it is possible to do that. And I cannot achieve five and a half foot pounds with a blowgun. I probably can do like maybe three foot pounds or two and a half or something like this. And I realize that there's people that have a much better technique, but seven and a half foot pounds with this, if, if it's deadly at, 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 at like two or three foot pounds, it will certainly be deadly at five and a half. And we are here today to test just that. So I asked my friends at FX Air Guns in Sweden if there is a way how they can attach a barrel that is chambered for these darts to an air gun and they gave me the seven and a half joule F version of the Dreamline and fit a Kevlar tube on it that has the exact right diameter for these bolts. So they slide in slowly and if I close the lock then the suction will keep them in the barrel so they, they don't fall out. So you muzzle load them and they're actually fairly powerful. Bang! <laughs> Shoots much harder than I can shoot it from a blowgun. Okay, so these are the bolts actually that we're using for this. These are original cold steel bolts and they're not too expensive. Really well made and uh, super sharp. Okay, so we got our block of ballistic gelatin to test. And of course I've been putting some clothes on it. So it's supposed to simulate it like a t-shirt or something. And I got like a, cl a car cleaning leather here, here. That's to dry off a car after a wash. And this is really, really solid material, very fine. And it's glued onto the block so that it simulates skin, hopefully. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. Okay, I tried to like spread the uh, arrows a little bit over the uh, over the gel block, and now let's go look at the impact. Yeah, so pretty impressive results. As you see, they penetrated very deeply, and of course they went through the t-shirt and the simulated skin with ease. And most of them actually shed the little cap and went on into the uh, gelatin, very much like in the bear kill video, where you could also see that the uh, that the head popped off and this thing marched right through, probably penetrating the beast's heart. Well, anyway, I think that's realistic. That is deadly. Okay, now we have the ultimate deadliness test for those bolts. <laughs> and, and so because we have a coconut that's actually, oops, molten into this thing here. And of course we have a, uh, a little bit of a t-shirt, although who wears a t-shirt on his head? So this is more like a base cap <laughs> and skin. And if the darts can penetrate the coconut, then I think they pass the test. Would you not agree?
Okay, let's go see. All right, seems like most of these darts easily penetrated both the gelatin and also the coconut. Very interesting. Now, um, these ones here stick in very solid. This one not so much. Let's pull it out and see why. Okay, so we see the reason why this one did not penetrate. As we see, it kind of rolled up the tip and also bent this. You can see how much power is behind this. And coconuts are actually fairly hard, obviously. <laughs> Okay, now we can really see how hard they impacted. And you can actually even see that there is a crack in the coconut here. So um, that's a really deep impact. And let's try to pull it out. Okay, this is how deep it was inside. Uh, mm, mm, mm. It's actually delicious. But that wasn't the reason why the Swedes sent me this gun. Actually, this is an aero gun, an aero launcher. Now, those used to be uh, unregulated in Germany until they changed the law about two years ago, and now they require a license. But only if they are more power than seven and a half joule, five and a half foot pounds. So, so we're thinking, what if we really go down in power and shoot very light arrows? Is this still fun to shoot? So we, they sent us five uh, versions of this for um, authorization by the uh, authorities. <laughs> Who else? And uh, just by releasing these two screws, you can typically just get out the arrow and then we can exchange it against the arrow uh, barrel or launch tube, as it would be more correctly. Okay, now we have the arrow launch tube on and these are the arrows that we're shooting with it. This is actually a regular arrow, so it's more heavy and also has a standard tip. Well, this one here is actually a super light uh, arrow. It actually has a glued in aluminum tip. So this is just about as heavy as a standard bow for the, uh, as a standard arrow for the uh, Adder crossbow. Super light. So we now got 12 meter distance and uh, we're going to shoot at a coaster because this is now the officially accepted method to make a difference between a toy and a weapon. <laughs> we have four arrows. Hmm. Okay, so all of them hit the coaster. <laughs> one was actually harder to push onto the launch tube, and maybe that one is no good, and you could also see that this one had less power, so maybe there's a defect in the shaft or something. We'll, we'll just simply um, discard it.
Okay, as you see, all three of them are on the coaster, so it's not a toy. So, I think it's really impressive how accurate this really, really weak aero gun is. I mean, those, those bolts are so slow, they're maybe 100 feet per second or something. But still, accuracy doesn't really have to do anything with power. It, it's really like how accurate the gun is in itself and how well made the arrows are. So, uh, as you see, that was fairly accurate for that kind of distance. <laughs> so, we're not sure yet if the, we're going to produce this with these arrows, like for these arrow um, launch tubes, or for the blowgun darts. What do you think? What kind of version would you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. And, of course, I mean, if you get one of these where you don't have a regulation, this will have so much power. It will have serious power, way more than like a siege, but probably exceeding 80 foot pounds or something. So this would be a really, really powerful and super accurate arrow shooter and very compact. Okay, and you also don't have to use the rear stock because this has almost no recoil, of course not. And um, therefore, just like a medieval crossbow, you don't need a shoulder rest. You don't need a buttstock, really. So you can, and it's so light that you can easily shoot it on your stretched arm. Really no problem at all. And you can still aim and you don't need a shoulder rest. <laughs> okay, and you also don't have to use the rear stock because this has almost no recoil, of course not. And um, therefore, just like a medieval crossbow, you don't need a shoulder rest. You don't need a buttstock, really. So you can, and it's so light that you can easily shoot it on your stretched arm. Really no problem at all. And you can still aim and you don't need a shoulder rest. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> In any case, I hope you like this because that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye.